System design interviews are incomplete without a deep dive into databases. If you're about to dive into a system design interview and you're scratching your head over databases, you've come to the right place. In the next few minutes, I'll take you through the database essentials you need to understand to ace that interview. We'll explore the role of databases in system design, sharding and replication techniques, and the key ACID properties. We'll also discuss different types of databases, vertical and horizontal scaling options, and database performance techniques. We have different types of databases, each designed for specific tasks and challenges. Let's explore them. First type is relational databases. Think of a relational database like a well-organized filling cabinet where all the files are neatly sorted into different drawers and folders. Some popular examples of SQL databases are PostgreSQL, MySQL and SQLite. All of the SQL databases use tables for data storage and they use SQL as a query language. They are great for transactions, complex queries and integrity. Relational databases are also ACID compliant, meaning they maintain the ACID properties. A stands for atomicity, which means that transactions are all or nothing. C stands for consistency, which means that after a transaction, your database should be in a consistent state. I is isolation, which means that transactions should be independent. And D is for durability, which means that once transaction is committed, the data is there to stay. We also have NoSQL databases, which drop the consistency property from the ACID. Imagine a NoSQL database as a brainstorming board with sticky notes. You can add or remove notes in any shape or form. It's flexible. Some popular examples are MongoDB, Cassandra and Redis. There are different types of NoSQL databases, such as key value pairs like Redis, document-based databases like MongoDB, or graph-based databases like Neo4g. NoSQL databases are schema-less, meaning they don't have foreign keys between tables which link the data together. They are good for unstructured data, ideal for scalability, quick iteration, and simple queries. There are also in-memory databases. This is like having a whiteboard for quick calculations and temporary sketches. It's fast because everything is in memory. Some examples are Redis and Memcache. They have lightning fast data retrieval and are used primarily for caching and session storage. Now let's see how we can scale databases. The first option is vertical scaling or scale up. In vertical scaling, you improve the performance of your database by enhancing the capabilities of individual server where the data is running. This could involve increasing CPU power, adding more RAM, adding faster or more disk storage, or upgrading the network. But there is a maximum limit to the resources you can add to a single machine, and because of that, it's very limited. The next option is horizontal scaling, or scale out, which involves adding more machines to the existing pool of resources, rather than upgrading a single unit. Databases that support horizontal scaling distribute data across a cluster of machines. This could involve database sharding or data replication. The first option is database sharding, which is distributing different portions, shards of the dataset across multiple servers. This means you split the data into smaller chunks and distribute it across multiple servers. Some of the sharding strategies include range-based sharding, where you distribute data based on the range of a given key, Directory-based sharding, which is utilizing a lookup service to direct traffic to the correct database. We also have geographical sharding, which is splitting databases based on geographical locations. And the next horizontal scaling option is data replication. This is keeping copies of data on multiple servers for high availability. We have master-slave replication, which is where you have one master database and several read-only slave databases. Or you can have master-master replication, which is multiple databases that can both read and write. Scaling your database is one thing, but you also want to access it faster, so let's talk about different performance techniques that can help to access your data faster. The most obvious one is caching. Caching isn't just for web servers. Database caching can be done through in-memory databases like Redis. You can use it to cache frequent queries and boost your performance. 
The next technique is indexing. Indexes are another way to boost the performance of your database. Creating an index for frequently accessed columns will significantly speed up retrieval times. And the next technique is query optimization. You can also consider optimizing queries for fast data access. This includes minimizing joins and using tools like SQL Query Analyzer or Explain Plan to understand your query's performance. In all cases, you should remember the CAP theorem, which states that you can only have two of these three, consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. When designing a system, you should prioritize two of these based on the requirements that you have given in the interview. If you're interested in the other parts that you'll encounter during the system design interview, I recommend you watch this video next about six essential concepts that you need to know for system design interview.